podcast you've been looking for all along. Step into the life of urban exploration with guests from around the world. Welcome to No Tracers. Welcome back to the No Tracers podcast. My name is Kay Inagonio. I am your host for this podcast all about urban exploration, abandoned places, decay, all the good stuff. If you're new to the podcast, please hit that subscribe button. If you're a veteran listener, please leave a rating and feedback, and I will send you a signed photo print. All you got to do is go to Apple Podcasts, type in No Tracers, scroll all the way to the bottom when you click on the show, and you will see other people's ratings and feedback. All you got to do is leave a rating, feedback, and take a screenshot of it, and then send it to me at no.tracers on Instagram, and I will mail you a signed photo print. If you guys are interested in picking up a copy of my photography book, No Tracers, An Urban Explorer's Diary, you can do that and read my blog and see my videos at notracers.com. This week on the podcast, I am talking to Matt Lambros, otherwise known as After the Final Curtain. Matt actually explores abandoned theaters around the United States, and he documents their decay and their restoration. He is a part of the Historical Society, and he helps get these buildings uh, confirmed for restoration, which I think is super cool. We're going to get into that and what he does for these buildings. As an urban explorer, he does more than just explore, and I think that that is super cool and very inspirational. We also have a partner on this podcast, and that is Liquid Death Water. If you are thirsty and you're a human that needs water, you should stop drinking out of plastic water bottles and check out Liquid Death. Here's an ad I made for you in three, two, one. From the streams of the Austrian Alps comes a new kind of water. A water that is sure to raise you from your grave. If you're tired of buying cases of plastic water bottles that contain carcinogens and God knows what else, or if you're trying to lower your waste footprint, Liquid Death comes in beautifully rugged aluminum cans. Murder your thirst with a can of liquid death. Check the link in the description and use code just the letter K at checkout for 10% off your order. Liquid death. Murder your thirst. So if you guys want to try liquid death water, go to liquiddeath.com and use the code just the letter K for 10% off your order. You can order one case, 30 cases, however many cases of water you want. Check it out. It's delicious. I love it. I drink it every day. And I actually have one on my desk right now for this episode. Super stoked. So sit back, relax, or enjoy your road trip to your next abandoned place and listen to this story from after the final curtain. Please introduce yourself and how long you've been exploring to the No Tracers audience. All right. So uh, my name is Matt Lambros. I uh, I run the you know, blog, book series, Instagram page called After the Final Curtain. Uh, I've been exploring since about, I want to say 2002. Um, first, you know, just houses and thing, like things that were in my neighborhood. And then it sort of graduated into the uh, anything. And then I narrowed my focus to pretty much just theaters. I think that's super interesting. Were you into like theater like performances before or did you just kind of fall in love with the decay of theaters? Um, it, it was, it was sort of, uh, I had been exploring, uh, asylums, uh, for a long time. Uh, I did pretty much anyone you can name on the East coast and uh, I became a little burned out with it. Um, when you research the history of these places, you know, it is, uh, it is a sad, a horrible, uh, tale. And I took about a year off. I had just moved to Brooklyn and I was looking for a new focus. I didn't know if I was going to continue photographing abandoned buildings. I, I literally don't think I photographed one from between for, I would say probably, uh, now there's one group I, I, uh, shot, but it was like, it was like a six month period where I was just like, nope, I'm done. I'm just going to concentrate on, I was doing street photography. I, I tr started one of the 365 projects where you shoot every, uh, at least one photo every day. I, I made it about two weeks before I was like, that's enough of that. <laughs> <clears throat> and 
<laughs> I, uh, I, you know, I was just, what, what do I want to do with it next? And I went to see a movie with some friends at the uh, Village East Cinemas. It was the, uh, which is an old Yiddish theater that was converted into a movie theater. Um, and we were watching a movie called uh, Poultry Geist, Night of the Chicken Dead. And I don't know if you're familiar with the trauma films, uh, the Toxic Avenger, uh, Tromeo and Juliet. Mm. They're horrible movies. <laughs> I mean, they're but they're made that way. And I, I have a, and my friends, all, we all have a thing for that. So well, we're sitting in this, in this beautiful theater with like a gorgeous ceiling and a dome and a proscenium arch and organ chambers, watching this, this ridiculous film and just i was just looking around going man i wonder if there are been theaters and i found uh it's, it's known as the lowe's kings uh it was named as lowe's kings in uh, brooklyn it was not too far from my apartment and i went and I, I checked it out um you know there was a homeless man living backstage and he had opened a small window uh, and I shot it, I think like 25 times over two years. And then it, and I just fell in love and I was like, yes, this is what I want to focus on. Like how, well, first of all, you know, going into that kind of building with, you know, it looks like a palace and seeing like, how could anyone, first of all, this was made to show movies. That's ridiculous to me as someone who grew up in the eighties and nineties and movies were in a multiplex, you know? There's nothing interesting in the theater except for what's on the screen. Uh, so I, I really had no idea that this was a thing. And then finding more and more. And like and like last uh, in the past couple of weeks, I, I photographed my 200th abandoned theater. Wow. Wow. And these, like, are these all in America? All 200 of these? Are all abandoned? Yeah, the ones you the ones you photographed. Uh, yeah, yeah, and some of them now are have been restored or are demolished. But for the most part, when I photographed them, they were all uh, in some state of like some of them. It's the lobby is in use for something else, or they use the uh, the orchestra level, the main level of the auditorium, and they put up a wall or a ceiling dividing the balcony and the balcony is abandoned. Mm. So, you know, they're not all not completely in use, but for the most part, they're in some form of decay. Wow. That is fascinating that there's so many just around the country. Like if you weren't an urban explorer, you wouldn't know about things like this, you know, like, it, and it's right under our noses, which is one of the most fascinating parts about this. It's like, uh, like I, I'm sure it's the same for you. Like I, when I drive down the street, I like spot them now. I like spot like, oh, there's an abandoned gas station. There's an abandoned 7-Eleven, like just in my area, you know? And it's like, I feel like if you're not an urban explorer, you don't really see that stuff. Right. And and this is a joke between uh, some of my friends. In some cases, we've, we've been standing in like a downtown area and been like, hey, do you smell that? And it's like the smell of must, like that cold, (laughs) like musty smell that you're like, that you, you know, the, that hits you when you first go into an abandoned building and we're outside and we're just like, where is it? Where is it? There's something around here that's like abandoned. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so fascinating. And for you, can you talk about the mindset as an urban explorer? Like, why do you do this? Like, what do you get out of it? Like, you know, it's not a normal hobby or uh, pastime or, you know, some people make a living doing this kind of stuff. Like you sell books and prints. So, I mean, you, you do, you know, in a way make a living doing this. So what for you, are you getting out of it as, as a, as a creator? Uh, so <clears throat> part of it is in this is you talk to any urban explorer and they'll tell you the same thing for the most part, like I'm documenting what's there because it won't be there for long and it's been forgotten. Especially in the cases of these uh, ornate theaters, you know, they were uh, they were they're like almost like a flash in a pan style of architecture. You know, they were built in, uh, you know, the really grand ones. I would say from the 1920s to the like late 1930s. That was the period that they were built, and you know, there were thousands of them across the country. Every town and city had at least you know cities had you know, tons of them, but Every town in the country had at least one. 
for the most part. Uh, and it, <clears throat> as quickly as they came, they you know they went away. They were victims of their own success, and uh, so that I'm out there and other people that I know are out there documenting them before they're gone is something that I, I'm, uh, you know, I like to give back. I feel like we're all giving back to, but the other thing is I work, I'm on the board of the theater historical society of America. I make a point to work with organizations that are looking to restore these buildings and help out however I can. I've, you know, I've volunteered at the ones close to me. I've, um, uh, you know, done research for them online uh, through various online libraries to try to find out like historic events that happened there to help get them on the National Historic Register. Um, for the Kings, I documented the entire restoration of the building and uh, put that to, wrote a book on it. Uh, so that's really what I'm trying to do is is sort of in some cases raise awareness about the ones that uh, have a group looking to save them and can be saved and don't need to continue to decay and fall apart. As much as I enjoy photographing, uh, you know, decay and buildings that are falling apart, I don't want all of these theaters to continue that to continue, especially when there is uh, a chance that it would survive and thrive again. Wow. That's amazing. Like as, as an urban explorer, I think the idea of, giving back and saving these buildings is so vital and so important. So I think it's uh, absolutely incredible that you do that kind of stuff. How did you get into the, the historical like building and, and restoration? Like what, what in your brain made you think like, Hey, maybe there's something else I can do for these buildings. Uh, well, uh, you know, they, that was that was kind of the thought was was sort of like here I am photographing all these buildings, and uh, what else can I do? You know, like I like, it, you know, it's a weird thing to say that you love a building. It's it's, it's <laughs> like an inanimate object, but to say that you like and that you care about it and mm. you don't want it to go away. And luckily, uh, right after I started photographing the Kings, it was announced that it was going to be restored. And as soon as it was announced, I was, you know, I had trespassed. I, I went in through an entrance that, uh, you know, they didn't know about. And I had photographed. I'd been there a lot. And as far as I know, they didn't have any idea I was in there. And so then I'm calling them, like, a year later going, Hi, I want to photograph the restoration of this. How Who do I talk to? And once I was, once I did that, um... It was that was clear that, that that was what I wanted to do. It was like okay, I need to help other other theaters like this. I need to uh, do, a document the restorations as many as I can, which I'm currently that's currently a project I'm working on, and I need to uh, I need to help out any organization that's looking to restore a building, however I can. Wow, that's incredible, man! Like, thank you for for doing that. You know, as 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 strange as it is, like you said, to love a building, I think that it's such a special thing, like these connections we have with these buildings. And so to be able to save them, I think is so, so cool and so just valuable. So yeah, thank you for doing that. Can you talk about the gear that you use? And this can be like your camera, this can be a backpack, a pair of shoes, anything like that for newer explorers and newer, uh, documentarians to get into the the culture and the game uh what are some of the the gear recommendations you have so what i i've been uh i've always i've shot with uh canon cameras since i pretty much since i switched from when i first started doing this i wanted to be a filmmaker and i was filming everything mm -hmm. and i switched over to uh being a photographer to pretty much strictly photography and of course, now I started to dabble in video again, but uh, I shot with Canon. Um, at first, I had a, a Rebel XT, and then you know, twenty D, a five D Mark II, five DS. Now I shoot with the Canon R five, mm. which is uh, my first mirrorless camera, which is fantastic. Yeah. I have an eleven to twenty four um, uh, lens that I. I use uh, for most of the interior shots and 
you know, I have a couple of it, a 50 and an 85, just to kind of make up the gaps in between if I need any close details. Um, I sh have a number of LED lights, uh, battery-powered LED lights, and I just picked up some light stands from L uh, Loom Cube. It's a yeah. company that makes these little LED lights. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of their lights because they're, I, I like a warmer temperature and they're very, very blue. Mm -hmm. But their stands are these lightweight, they 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 uh, they look like little batons, right? They fold up into these little things that look like little batons. And they fold, they fold out into about five and a half feet. And for lighting a theater, which... You know, it's pitch black in there, unless there's some holes in the ceiling. Uh, there, with with my lights, they're, they're perfect. And they're easy enough that you can keep throw in any camera bag and bring with you. And then I have, uh, you know, usually I have a GoPro and uh, a gimbal for that. And uh, just a Manfrotto tripod. Nice. Yeah, I love talking gear. I think I, I'm a huge gearhead and... Uh, so it's always fun to chat about the gear. Um, tell me what made you want to start creating books. I also have a photography book about urban exploring and it's just about my stories and my travels around the world into these different abandoned places. So what made you want to start creating books? And I think one of the cool things about what you do is that like if people pre-order it from your site, they get a ticket stub as well and a print. And I think that's so unique to what you offer. So tell me what got you into creating these books. Well, so I had teamed up with uh, my, the Theater Historical Society before I became a board member uh, back in 2013. That was how I was able to gain access to restore the kings, or the photograph the restoration of the kings. And we were going to put out a book. And at the same time, I was putting together a pitch uh, to publishers for, because I, I started After Donna Curtain as a blog in, I want to say 2000, yeah, 2011. So it's his 10 year anniversary of, of the blog. And I did. A, I gave a talk and was re talked to a literary agent who told me to put together a pitch, and she would shop it around. And uh, so at the same time, I was working on the King's book, I w which was going to be published by the Theater Historical Society of America. I had another book that was uh, being pitched, and it ended up uh, a friend of mine who uh, put me in touch with a, pu a publisher that liked the pitch and uh, I published, he, he has, uh, it was Jean Glaze um, publishing and he was doing an abandoned series. So I did my, that ended up becoming my first book. It came out before the King's book, uh, after the frontal curtain, uh, the fall of the American movie theater. Wow. And that came out in 2016 and we did a follow up uh, after the frontal curtain, America's abandoned theaters in 2019. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm, I'm. And those are more. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, you're uh, good. Say those are more. Uh, they're not so much about me, like my my experiences in the uh, in the theaters. Um, it's about the history of them. You know, I I, I have a little um, blurb in the beginning where I talk about about things, but it really is more about the buildings, and I wanted to profile them uh, at a, for a wider audience. You know, a, a book gives a little more and as you know you have a book out a little more than a website mm -hmm. you know if you if you have a book and you can point to the book and say read this or look at that people will take you more seriously um and that really i think helped open some more doors and i wanted people to see um more about the history of the buildings and it's really was a Hey everyone, these are still here. You know, it's sort of a call to arms. Like you can do something about this. Because my my number one email that I get from people is, oh, I walk by that every day. I, I had no idea that existed. My grandmother used to tell me stories about that building. Wow. And you know, you you think once a building kind of falls out of the public eye in that way, where like you know a theater like this, like let's say it. Uh, the marquee is taken off and it just kind of looks like a building and it's boarded up. The majority of people, it's not like us where we'll, we see that and they're like, Hey, what is in there? <laughs> um, the majority of the public is just like, Ugh, look at that. Get it like either demolish it or they just don't pay attention to it. And it's just like, there's nothing there. It might as well be an empty lot. Yeah. 
so if you know you're looking to to do anything to aid any group or anything and i tell every um every group that has possession of a historic theater that is looking to restore it is get the public involved to make it seem like it's theirs so that they will take ownership and want to bring it mm. back absolutely because for the most part these have been closed since the seven like i would say the average 70s 80s so you know you got 40 years that these have been closed for so the majority of people didn't go to a show there they didn't go to the movies there they don't you know they have no ownership of the building they don't know or care what it is Mm. But if you, if you, I find if you, the best way to get people interested in, in historic theaters is to bring them into one and show it to them. Yeah. Just like, look at this. Yeah. Yeah. You got to make them. It's a little different than. You got to make them be a part of it. Mm hmm. Exactly. And, and that goes for other abandoned architecture, you know, uh, industrial, industrial architecture, like old uh, steel plants and things like that. It's just so amazing to look at and such a visual treat but i feel like theaters are kind of unique in that in churches too to that extent that the architecture is beautiful and you can do so many other things with it it doesn't have to be a theater or it doesn't have to be a church like they can be adapted and, and reused as so many different ways and i've seen so many like Seen theaters turned into gyms where they just flatten the balcony and flatten the floor and put all the gym equipment there. And, you know, you stare at the beautiful stage and proscenium area while you work out. Wow. That's cool. That's super cool. I can't imagine, like, yeah. going into a gym and it being, like, an old restored theater. Like, that sounds awesome. Like, I definitely want to experience you, something like that. You're in California, right? Yes. Uh, Huntington Park, uh, the Warner uh warner pacific theater it's uh, i think a crunch fitness now okay and you can just go in and see it yeah check warner it out it's pacific great theater okay mm-hmm. i'm writing it down because that sounds yeah. absolutely incredible so can you tell me about your scariest experience exploring i know that you do a lot of like stuff with restoration and stuff so you you may not have like too many scary exploration stories but i would love to hear one if you've got one Oh, I, I've been exploring for about for about 20 years. I got quite a few <laughs> scary experiences. Um, you want me to tell you about the time I was shot at? Yes, that would be great. <laughs> All right. All right. So this was, I want to say, 2004-ish. Um, uh, we, I was exploring uh, Danvers State Hospital in Danvers, Massachusetts with a bunch of friends. And one of the friends brought this uh, giant, like, it was like a million candle power flashlight it was it basically you could shine it at someone and it would look like daytime all around them because it was just so bright and of course it only lasted about 10 minutes so we were up on the cafeteria roof and i forget if people had been throwing stuff down or pushing stuff off the roof i don't remember what had happened but the security guard was super on edge it might have been even before we got there but we showed up, my friend shined the light down at him, and when he shined the light, he turned and fired a shot in the air. Whoa. And we took off and ran into, like, so you the cafeteria roof, you run through that, and you're in the, uh, in the auditorium. And then we ran, if you go straight, you're right in the admin section. So we were just kind of like, Let's just stay here for a second and, you know, we'll walk around and see if we see what's going on. Maybe that wasn't what we thought it was. So the walkway between the admin and the uh, auditorium area had no windows, uh, no boards on the windows. And, you know, it was just out to the air. And as soon as we walked in there, uh, bang, bang, two shots rang out. And, and like, we saw an absolute shot spot on the wall where a bullet had hit. So we immediately backed off and hid in the attic because it was, you know, one of the safest, easiest places to hide. And we stayed there for about a half hour or so before creeping back out to the cafeteria roof to see what was going on. And I guess the security guard had called the, the police. So the police had come up and they were yelling up to us. Like we, we yelled down and we were like, he shot at us. 
And and in the meantime, I guess the security guard had killed a deer in the front yard what? of the <laughs> uh, asylum, like with, with his gun, and he blamed it on us. Said, "Oh no, the kids in, uh, broke in the building, and they have guns, and they killed that deer." Wow. We we definitely didn't have any guns. At least I didn't, and the fr- the group that I had come up with didn't. I don't know if there was someone else in the building who had a gun, but uh, anyway, so we were yelling down to him, uh, "Check his car." That we watched because we watched the security guard put his gun away. So we we're like, check behind his seat. That's where it is. And the cop went over and checked and saw that he had a gun, but the guy was, he had either had a permit or he was an off duty police officer. So they didn't care. And he was like, the police officer was like, come down here and tell, and we'll talk about it. And we were like, no, no, we're not going to come down there. Have a nice night. And we, you know, took off and, got out safe and fine but it was it was for about an hour or so we were all like ah, what are we gonna do and this was christmas eve by the way <laughs> fantastic wow yeah um so that that was a that was an interesting uh yeah i didn't go back up to that building for about three months after that i was like i'm gonna, gonna stay home i don't feel like i want to risk getting shot at again for sure yeah anytime there's a gun involved like it's not a good time it's just not a good time mm-hmm. and we've heard a couple stories on the show about you know people pulling guns out on explorers and things like that and i i've never been in that situation personally but like dang that's that's definitely a scary scary situation um and then what has been your favorite exploration overall? I know you've done this for quite a while and you've been to a lot of places. Do you have a, a favorite one or two explorations you've been on? Um, well, I think my, my first time walking into the King's Theater was, uh, you know, coming from backstage. Uh, it, it was sort of, you know, it's funny because the other story I was going to tell with Scary was also the first time at the King's because... I walked into this, you know, I went into this, uh, obviously, a homeless person's, like, house, basically. The back, he had, the dressing rooms were turned into that. And I couldn't figure out how to get from backstage to the actual theater itself. So I was walking around, and I walked into a room that was full of brand new, or new looking backpacks and purses. Mm-hmm. I realized, and like, with wallets and IDs in them, and was like, oh, whoever lives here has been mugging people cool i'm here with my you know couple thousand dollars worth of camera gear and i'm alone oh man and then i hear from the dressing room next to it uh sounds of snoring and right outside the door is a sledgehammer so i grabbed the sledgehammer and walked away with it because I was like, I'm not going to be in this building alone and have this guy walk up behind me and bash me in the head with a sledgehammer. Oh my God. And so I find, I finally found the way out into the theater itself. And you know, there was one light on and I was just like, what is this? This it like, just was overwhelmed by it. Like, you know, it, you know, like dra- like, drapes with like holes in them like just hanging by a, like a thread uh all this plaster work you know plaster relief some of them half crumbled on the floor and peeling paint and it was just amazing it was and, and then me walking into the lobby and seeing all the chandeliers still in place and that had a bunch of natural light coming in through the front doors and it was just it was amazing look it was beautiful But I could only convince myself to stay there for about an hour because I was like, I am alone in this building. There's one way out and it's right next to a guy sleeping who was mugging people and there's a sledgehammer. So I was like, I don't know. I I I had the sledgehammer with me that didn't leave my side, but who knows what else he has in his room. Mm. And on later trips to the theater, I made sure to bring people with me. Uh, We'd hear him backstage making a ton of noise trying to scare us out of the place. Wow. Dang. But we always avoided going back there because, like, back into his area. We kind of left him alone. Oh. Yeah, it's like you never know who's going to be in these buildings and what their, like, intentions are. It's crazy that you, like, ran into his, like, stash spot. (laughs) Yeah. 
Well, you know, he was he was good for one thing because eventually they sealed it up, but he kept figuring out how to open it up again. Mm. So there was always a way in if, if you just looked hard enough. <laughs> for sure. And then can you talk a little bit about social media and what it's done for you as a creator? Sorry, sorry you cut out for a second. Oh, sorry. Uh, can you talk about social media and what it's done for you as a creator? Uh, yeah, it, I've I uh, jumped on the, a Facebook page for After the Curtain pretty much as soon as I launched it, and uh, th- you know that has helped me reach a lot of people. Um, Instagram has been uh, has been it's it's interesting to share and also see other people's. Uh, you know, I, I, I kind of isolated myself for quite a while from the exploring community, in quotes, and kind of backed off um, when starting pretty much when I uh, was kind of thinking of changing to something else. Um, part of it is because uh, you, you know, I, I was kind of, I I feel like there's cycles and, and, and waves of... Uh, like groups of people discovering, exploring. Mm. And when I first started exploring, people were mad at us <laughs> because we explored too much. We were a bunch of college kids and we had time. So we'd go to like five, six places in a day. Yeah. And people, and this was when there were forums, not there wasn't social media mm. yet. And I remember people messaging us and being like, Hey, you guys are doing too much. You're going to too many places. <laughs> And I remember just being like, what? that's because you're old and you have a family and kids. Yeah. And you can't go out and do places every day. I want to see all these places before they're gone. Uh, and so every few years, there's a new wave of explorers. So I had kind of fallen out of, like, I didn't, wasn't keeping up with the new people. or wasn't, you know, paying attention to who was around. And Instagram, I started to dip my toe back in a little bit on that and just like, post for the sake of posting and uh, interact with people and it's it's been great uh for the most part uh just seeing other people's work and collaborating with other with uh people i wouldn't normally work with and i've met uh, i met one of my closest friends on instagram and we've been exploring like i pretty much explore with him almost exclusively now wow yeah, it's, it's awesome how you can make these connections. And I mean, through this podcast, I've met so many people. And, you know, anytime I travel somewhere, I just hit somebody up and we go explore. And I think that Instagram's great for things like that. But like you were saying, oh, definitely. there can be a lot of like drama, especially on like the Facebook groups and things like that. So I try to stay away from mostly Facebook. Instagram seems to be pretty cool. But Facebook, there's like a lot of drama over uh, there. Oh, uh, I, f- I found I found Twitter is the only one that I've found with no drama. That's fair. Uh, I've had my share off both. I've I've other than uh, like I met a gr- good group of people that I explored with uh, pretty much right off the bat. Um, we actually we, we called ourselves the serial trespassers, but we spelled it with a C like the like cereal. cereal. <laughs> yeah. Nice. And uh, that was our that was our group because back then every explorer group had their own weird names Mm -hmm. like that that was like a thing and exploring for a while instead of you know how now they have the like hubs that are like you know uh, decay all day or whatever they they were everyone had their group had like there was fallout ue Mm -hmm. um you know it was zero trespassers there was abandoned spaces there were you know they were all everyone all had their own group and And that was ours. And I've pretty much kept in touch. And we, up until COVID, we pretty much went exploring. One of them actually came with me on a road trip during COVID. Nice. Um, So uh, I, you know, I've kind of stuck with them pretty much to try to avoid any sort of drama. Mm. Because anytime I I get too into it, I find it. And then it just is like, I get a little jaded and don't want to deal with any exploring anymore for a little while. Exactly. And then do you have any bucket list items, like places you want to go that you haven't been yet? Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, I've, my bucket list get, gets shorter every year because I've gone to most of them, uh, to be honest. Uh, there was, I'm trying to think of, uh, um, I'd, I'd like to go, 
honestly, and this is like such a cliche explorer. I'd like to go to Chernobyl. Um, I'd really like to see that. I I haven't uh, made it there yet. And um, where else was I? Well, it, you know, I'm not going to say it because it's a theater, but there's a few theaters in the United States that I'm like, mm, I need to get there and I need to get there soon. Mm. Uh, I'll say it's, it's in the Midwest. Um, and I have no, it's like, it's in the Midwest and there's nothing near it. And it's like, I would literally be flying to the state and then driving six hours to go to this one spot. Wow. And I haven't been able to justify it yet. <laughs> yeah. You got to maybe like, I don't know, find a, find more stuff out there to like hit while you're there, you know, just to make it worth the, the journey. <laughs> well, I have a friend who lives near there who's getting married soon. And I'm really hoping that I can kind of work that into the trip. For sure. That would be cool. And uh, if you could live in one building you've explored for one week, which place would it be? And now, is it abandoned? Yes, or is it it's, a, it's, it's, it's abandoned. Restored? Which one? I'm oh, sorry, I didn't hear oh, that. Oh, yeah, an abandoned place you've explored. Abandoned place I've explored. Um, so I'll, I'll get in trouble for this because it's not technically abandoned and the people who talk, who I know that deal with it, it's just not being used right now. Uh, the Uptown Theater in Chicago, Illinois. Mm. That is, I would, I would, I could shoot there every day for a month and not be satisfied. It is beautiful. I've heard a lot about that place. Yeah, it is gorgeous, but it is like, <laughs> I've I've been in it twice uh, on tours, and uh, it is just like. I don't know where uh, where I would even begin with it. <laughs> I love it. And my last question for you is, what is something you know now that you wish you knew when you started all of this? How to use a camera. Maybe how to hold a camcorder steady. <laughs> <laughs> I recently revisited a bunch of my videos of places that are all demolished. And you know, that shoe on the floor is not super interesting. Maybe look at the hallway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I could go. I wish having the, and I don't think I'm like the best photographer in the world. I'm not saying anything like that, but I wish I had the knowledge um, and camera skills I have now when I started, mm. because I think I, I like, I would have, have documented some amazing places that are, long gone and the photos that i have from them just don't do the buildings justice yeah definitely i can totally relate to that you know i wish i could go back and revisit some of these buildings and take photos but the buildings are gone so it's like you you have what you have and like even back in the day i used to shoot in like jpeg instead of raw and so now i'm like great like i can't even do anything with these photos <laughs> Oh, you know, when I first started taking photos, uh, I had, I had gotten a, my mom had gotten me a, uh, a 2.2 Kodak, 2.2 megapixel Kodak easy share camera for my high school graduation. And that was what I shot with. And it had like eight megabytes of internal memory. So I would go shoot a place. This is before I bought a compact flash card. So I would go and shoot a place and I would take 12, 15 photos, depending on the quality of it, and then go through and delete the ones that I thought were bad so I could take a couple more. Mm. You know, I, you know, was when you're just a kid and you have no idea what you're doing. Yeah. You know, and I'm, I feel that way about places I shot last year. Like, oh, man, I wish I could go back there and reshoot that. You know, I feel like about that about places I shot a week ago. Like... Oh, I should have done that differently, or I should have shot it like this, or, and so I, I always like to, if I can, go back m more than once. Like, I'm never satisfied with my shots from a place, never, and I feel like that's just what artists are like. Like, I have to eventually be like, that's good enough. <laughs> just like you can't constantly go back and redo it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. 
And then uh, can you tell people if they want to keep following your journey, where can they find you online, drop your social media, the website, your Facebook, everything? Okay. I'm, uh, you can find me at afterfinalcurtain.net. Uh, I have After Final Curtain at Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Twitter is actually Matt Lambros at Twitter because they require you to have your real name or something. I don't know. Like, that's what it is. And uh, then my books are on Amazon or any bookstore near you, After Final Curtain. And uh, my King's book is King's Theater, The Rise, Fall, and Rebirth of Brooklyn's Wonder Theater. All right, guys, that was my episode with After the Final Curtain. If you guys want to check out his social media, I've linked all of his things down below for you. You guys are the absolute best. Please leave a rating and feedback on this podcast to let me know what you thought of it. And if you do leave a rating and feedback on Apple Podcasts, take a screenshot of it and send it to me at no.tracers on Instagram, and I will send you a signed photo print. And if you would like a signed photo print and a copy of my book, No Tracers, and Urban Explorer's Diary, please head to notracers.com. You can read my blog, you can see my videos, and you can pick up a copy of my book. Thank you, guys. I'll talk to you next week for another episode of the No Tracers podcast. Stay strong, keep enduring, go out, go explore something, and remember, leave no trace.